Hey guys, Chris Moran here. Um, in this video, I'm going to um, go through the steps that I do to prepare my Alpha um, Dragon engines um, for racing for before I break them in. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of things. So let's get to it and open this bad boy up. Um, so when you buy an alpha engine then you can get it in either a combo pack with a pipe or just the engine all engines um, do come pre broke in from the factory but you will still need to um, finish the break in um, it's just kind of uh, helps helps get it going. You still want to do the finish break in and it does come with uh, little instructions on how they recommend you do so. Go ahead and open this up. So there is some oil on it from their break-in process and so we'll get that wiped off here okay so the only thing I really do to the engine right out of the box is I will double check the screws on the back plate make sure they're tight and I'll double check all the engine heads um, screws and make sure they're tight and then as far as the carburetor goes, I actually will be removing that and sealing that with um, some sealant. So I'll go ahead and pull this carburetor off of here. Got the carburetor. And then uh, crankcase. Um, so there's a couple of things. Um, you definitely want to use a small zip tie around the car boot. Just use these little guys here. Don't do what I just did and pull it on too tight in the wrong spot. So make sure it's on that big part that goes over the carburetor body itself. And then just pull it tight and uh, cut off the remaining. What's it? It looks like this. Nice. Just holds that um, car boot air and dirt, dirt tight, so nothing can get in there, and it also keeps it from being able to ever come off of there. Now that we've done that, we're going to um, get a little bit of brake cleaner here on a rag and we will clean this crankcase right here where the carburetor sits on. Make sure there's no oil there as well as where the uh, pinch bolt is in the crankcase. I'll clean that too. Make sure there's absolutely no oil. And then actually going to clean all oil or residue off of the carb body itself that goes into the crankcase. And where the O-ring is sitting on the carburetor there. Okay. Now we've done that. 
and we have all the oily residue removed, we will take um, some gasket maker. What I use is just this ultra black um, high temp gasket maker. And we will get just a uh, flat screwdriver or a X-Acto knife. We'll get a little bit on the tip. And then right where the O-ring is, all the way around, I'll just basically build up around that with a much thicker sealing layer there. Okay, and then when you get it, it should look something like this um, just a nice thick bead of silicone all the way around the top side where the o ring was. And then once we get that on there, we will take it back to the engine here. Now, if you don't know exactly where the carburetor itself should be in to be in alignment with the car and the throttle linkage and the center dip and all that then I recommend you having your engine in the car when you put this back in because um, once you put this in and you lock it down you're not going to want to break it back loose um, once this silicone has been seated into place you're not going to want to break it loose to uh, uh, re readjust the carburetor's placement so uh, make sure that the placement of the carburetor is exactly where it needs to be once you put this in and lock it down um, so I'm very confident on the angle in which I need to put the carb so I can do it right here out of the car basically what you're gonna do put it in there get your angle you want the carb to be at and then you're going to pull down on the carburetor itself as hard as you can and then lock down the um, pinch bolt itself and then you should have a nice um, thin bead of silicone all the way around the carburetor there And then, once we have that, the carburetor itself will never be loosened again throughout the entire life of the engine. It'll always stay just like this. So, to further seal the engine and make it more airtight and um, less prone to ever develop an air leak, I go one step further and seal the actual pinch bolt itself. So as you can see right now, it's um, right there at the crankcase. Those are sealed with an O-ring internally in the case. What I'm actually going to do is take this silicone and cover that whole surface right there and seal it from the um, outside of the crankcase. So it'll be like double sealed. It'll still have the O-ring on the inside and then it's going to be sealed from the outside with the silicone. So let's take a good blob of it and kind of spread it over the entire surface here. And it should look something like that. When it's done, you'll have the whole surface covered, all the open um,
area there. And that's still easily removable if you ever had to take the carburetor off. You can um, easily get that off. So it's not it's not 100% permanent, but it does airtight seal your engine so that you don't ever have any um, air leaks develop that could cause you um, tuning issues or any any uh, just anything that would randomly make your engine run kind of weird. Uh, so that's the last step to sealing the carburetor. Uh, you want to let that set for 24 hours before you ever um, run the engine. Um, so usually I'll just do this and set my engine to the side and let that dry before I apply the clutch or a return spring or a return band on the carburetor and align my high speed needle. So. That way you don't touch your fingers in that wet silicone or anything like that. So, um, But we will go ahead and double check the back plate screws. Make sure they are tight. And then you also want to double check the um, head bolts themselves and make sure they are tight. And then you're ready to drop in your glow plug, apply your clutch, and so on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply the clutch um, because there's... I just want to touch on that subject for a second here. So when you're applying your clutch to this a brand new engine or basically any engine for that matter. You want to go ahead and remove the collet. So remove the collet. Okay. Now you're going to want to clean this collet with brake cleaner. Make sure there's absolutely no oil on that whatsoever. And then you want to clean the crankshaft itself where the collet rides. And then you want to make so you make sure there's no oil on there whatsoever either. Okay, once you've done that, you're ready to put the collet back on. When you're putting the collet on, it's very important that you pull out on the crankshaft and you push the collet all the way on as far as it will go. You want no in and out movement between the crankshaft and the collet. So once you start putting the flywheel on and buttoning it down, then wherever the collet bites on the crankshaft, that's where it's going to be. And if it has uh, movement there, the crankshaft can move back and forth, hit the uh, back plate, and and got all sorts of issues so. so I do run the alpha four shoe clutch and this clutch is super awesome that it actually comes already pre-built and even better than coming pre-built it comes pre-built with the settings that I actually prefer to run so even though it does come with all the springs to adjust it how you to your liking I actually prefer how it comes right out of the package so it's super easy for me I can just get myself a brand new clutch I can put it right on and um, very minimal effort and they perform outstanding and last a very long time so that's cool so I did take brake cleaner and I, I made sure there was no oil on the where the collet rides on the flywheel as well so now we're actually ready to 
go ahead and apply it to the crankshaft. I take a tiny bit of blue Loctite on the threads, nothing crazy, um, but just a tiny bit there. And then carefully put the flywheel on here. And then go ahead and lock it down with the nut that's included here. And you want to tighten this um, essentially as tight as you possibly can. Um, go ahead and put some pliers on the flywheel itself and go ahead and crank this extremely tight. Would help if I had better pliers, but you know, I don't. Okay, so I'm tighten that as tight as I possibly can, and now we're ready to apply a clutch bell and shim it up as we normally would. And um, like I said, 24 hours on the silicone to dry, and then this puppy was ready to uh, fire up for break in. So, as always, guys, any questions you have, feel free to message me. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video can be uh, helpful to somebody out there. And uh, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, follow for more videos to come.